It is I, your friendly neighborhood, they, them. I'm Vic. I did not do a March wrap up. It is April 16th today. So I'm going to take you through all the books I read in March and all the books I have read so far in April. I'm also going to go ahead and show you my new reading journal, talk you through a little bit how I'm starting to annotate books a little bit differently, and maybe even set out like a little TBR so we can see how I like pace my reading with my little post-it notes and things like that. So I do want to go in order. There's one set of books that I don't have here and those are the Heartstopper books. I watched Heartstopper for the first time last year. One of my students recommended it to me. It's the reason I have a little blue Caveco because in the show they had a Caveco that exploded and I was like I need that fountain pen. Moon Knight is the reason I bought a Lamy, because there was a Lamy in Moon Knight. I am easily influenced. Heartstopper made me so joyful and happy. I read them all for free on webtoons from start to finish in one day in one sitting. And just experiencing queer joy is just so good and makes me so happy and feel warm and fuzzy. So highly recommend Heartstopper, both the graphic novels and the... TV show, I would give the TV show five stars. I would give the graphic novels in total like three and a half stars. Just because the show has like a deep place in my heart. But the comics were still great. So I read all of the Heartstopper comics in March. This is my little writing board. Let's go to March here. This is a Midori. It's a Midori planner. I think, is that what they're called? It's, I mean, it's an empty notebook, but it has a calendar in the front, and then it just has blank gridded pages in the back. It's A4, so I read the Heartstarmer books. You can see there the other things that I read. I've been using stamps to say which books were my favorite of that month, and which books I DNF. Something's always falling out of my books. I will show you these stamps. They are from... got them on Jet Pens. So here's a little five star stamp. And there's a little stamp that I use as a DNF stamp. So my favorite books of March were You Better Read Lightning and Heartstopper, the first one. I think the first graphic novel were better than the other ones. Um, I DNF'd Pure Color. I got 100 pages into Pure Color by Sheila Hetty. We're talking about the kinds of people that you were, whether you were a fish person or a bear person. Then she was like really talking about her dad in a way that I don't want people to talk about their fathers, you know, like, like I don't, I don't even want to say it. Um, and then she turned into a leaf and she was living in the same leaf as her father and then it got to a point where I'm like, I don't know what I'm reading, I'm not enjoying this, what's going on? So I DNF'd your color, but You Better Be Lightning was a favorite. Um, here we go. So I read Andrew Gibby. Oh, I didn't tap this one either. Okay, I gotta tap this one as well. Sometimes I just get really excited <laughs> and then I don't tap. There's a place where you get to sign where they talk about like, here, it's called To Whom It Definitely Concerns. Please accept this letter as formal notification that I am resigning from the position of my own worst enemy. I've appreciated the opportunity to lower my standards so far they could win a limbo contest against a crumb. So it's this whole thing and then at the end you sign your name. And I love that. It was very interactive. I just love Andrew Gibby. They're one of my favorite poets. Let me see. If your wounds are still open, trust they are doors to an answer and walk through. What if we don't have to be healed to be whole? There are holes in every inch of fabric that makes me who I am. Five stars. Yes. I read Ducks with my friend Jay. We read Two Years in the Oil Sands by Kate Beaton. Um, I, I read it pretty fast. I'm going to say like two or three days. It was heavy and uncomfortable to read because like physically but also the subject matter Basically, she lives in Canada, she graduates from school, is in a lot of debt, wants to pay back her debt, goes to work in the oil sands, like, like oil drilling. But she works in, like, the tool department where they, like, clean and um, 
inventory and receive the tools that they give out to the people who are like working the fields and she does that for a few years like in different um camps like in different stations and the whole book is just like sexual assault like the entire book like everyone's doing cocaine everyone's assaulting this poor woman and I'm just like I can't read 200 pages of this so I read the whole thing I didn't DNF it I would give it like two and a half stars it just was not for me not plot wise not art wise not for me I also read Big Swiss. I read most of it via audiobook. Even when I was like reading it with my eyes, I was also listening to the audiobook because they have voices for everyone. Like um, the therapist has a voice and it's perfect. A Big Swiss has a voice because there's like a cast. It just like, it was way better. So I highly recommend if you're gonna read this, just like get the audiobook from your library. Big Swiss. I enjoyed it. Did I enjoy it as much as the other Jen Begins? Not as much. Was it still pretty hilarious and weird? <laughs> Yes. So uh, she's a transcriber for a therapist, a, a, like a, a sex therapist. And Big Swiss comes into the therapist's office and immediately she's like obsessed with her. She meets her at the park, lies about her identity, they form a relationship, and then it all like blows up in her face. Um, it's what one would expect. I don't know. There were bumblebees and a decrepit old house and a donkey. And yeah, that was Big Swiss. I think I gave that four stars. And then is that all that I read? I think that's all that I read in March. So here are my April books. So in April, I read Evidence by Mary Oliver. This is like evidence that there is a God. Like that's what this book is about. Like here's proof that life is holy. Like hear me out. Like I swear to God. This is where I started changing up my annotating, like my tabbing system. So I always have, I always put little stars next to my favorite poems and then those were marked with a yellow tab and then I put a little star on that poem as well and then the blue was just like stanzas that I liked. So I made that distinction between favorite and stanzas and in other books I was making the distinction between like vocab words, um, things that were quoted from other people. Uh, book recommendations. So I'm starting to keep tabs on other things, not just beautiful language. So I'm going to read you one of my favorites. It's got five stars, of course. I I love Mary Oliver. I'm going to read you the one titled Prayer. Hi. Se fue. Let's go back. Prayer. Okay. May I never not be frisky. May I never not be risque. May my ashes, when you have them, friends and give them to the ocean leap in the froth of the waves still loving movement still ready beyond all else to dance for the world evidence there's also something about like a skinny hardback that i dig then i read uh agua viva i tried reading uh, reading agua viva last June and I couldn't do it like the words weren't sinking into my brain so I DNF'd it. It says it here. June 16th 2022 DNF. Then I started it March 26th. Finished. Oh I finished this one April 8th. Started in March. Loved it. Five stars. This gave me severe anxiety. It's my third life factor. The whole thing was a stream of consciousness existential rant. It I went on the Clarice Life Spectre website and she kept notebooks on like a specific topic and then she would just put them together into a book and this is what this feels like. She kept notebooks on every thought, every stream of consciousness thought on existentialism, on life, on death and then just put them together. I think this is sold as a novel. It's not a novel. This is not a novel. This is Clarice Life Spectre's brain. This is philosophy. This is witchcraft. This is living in my body and in my cells and in my soul. And I will never forget this book. And the second I finished it, I wanted to read it again. The second I finished it, I almost cried thinking that there was so little by Spectre that was published. That there wasn't more. Like this. I This is my third this year. This is the one where like Life Spectre sank into my body. And I said, oh my god. Holy shit. What? <laughs> but if you're not ready to like deal with some heavy subject matter and have a full-on existential crisis and like panic every two pages and it's not for you but I mean I I have tabbed almost every single page 
I read it very little by little, like two pages a day, because that's as much as I could take. Am I free? There is something still holding me, or am I holding it? It's also this. I am not entirely unbound because I am in a union with everything. Moreover, one person is everything. It's not heavy to carry because it simply isn't carried. It is everything. But what is a window if not the air framed by right angles? It reads like poetry. I don't know how to explain this book more than that. Just read it. But it will only sink it and accept you into its orbit if you're ready. You have to be ready for Agua Viva. <sighs> chills, like literal chills. Okay. Then I finally read Real Estate. I finally read it. I just didn't want it to be over. I read the other two a few years back. I would say maybe three or four years back. I have these beautiful editions. They're some of my favorite memoirs slash nonfiction. This is more about Libby's childhood. This is more about her writing. This one is about uh, like later in adulthood, like her kids are going out to college, empty nest syndrome, being in your 50s, 60s, like being single, dealing with like your kids leaving, wanting to buy a home for yourself. And she also talks about having written The Man Who Saw Everything, which I have read. I've read almost every Libby and enjoyed all of them, except for Diary of a Snake, Billy and Girl, which I don't have, but it's being re-released and that cover is way nicer now. And this one. I haven't read this one yet, but I've read all the other ones. And I just love the way that she writes. This is my least favorite. I think my most favorite, I like them in order, like this one first and then this one and then this one but it was still good I think I gave it four stars and I enjoyed every minute of it so here were my annotations so you can see there the pink was beautiful language the green is that if it reminded me of something else like another book another song someone else's quotes um let's have a look the blue was that something that I found funny because Deborah Levy is a freaking comedic genius and yellow was either a new word or a book recommendation so if the author talked about a book that maybe I wanted to read or like check out so for example yellow I underlined Rebecca West's Black Lamb because it sounded really interesting here's a quote that I liked it is very simple to be happy but it, it is very difficult to be simple I confess to Vayu that I understood how it was difficult to be simple Every writer knows that to be true, but I did not really believe his line about happiness. She said, well, I'm happy to be sitting here beside you with a cup of hot water and a tea bag. It occurred to me that I was happy too. Happiness is in the little things, it's in the small moments. So I finally finished The Living Autobiography. And then my most recent was The Death Notebook. So I have all of my Anne Sexton from a book lot that I bought on eBay, my favorite activity. Let me go get it together a couple years ago. They're old, but they don't feel read. Like, I don't think anyone ever read them. I think they just own them. Because <laughs> they're not, there are no, like, lines on the spines or anything. I actually had to, like, play with it to be able to read it. So I own all of them. But then I was just too scared to read them. But I finally, I finally started. And I started with the death notebooks. The first person they'll tell you about when you read Sexton is like Plath because they were both like around the same time, both confessional poets and like yes and no. Like I see the resemblance but it also feels very different. It feels different. The fact that she talked about enemas and pooping in this book I was not ready for. And Sexton when you say confessional it's confessional. There's no filter. There is no strainer. Like it just is what it is. It was about death. It was about abortion. It was about marriage. It was so many things. I would like to think that no one would die anymore if we all believed in daisies. Depression is boring, I think. And I would do better to make some soup. That's good soup. <laughs> the singing is a kind of dying, a kind of birth, a votive candle. I have a dream mother who sings with her guitar, nursing the bedroom with moonlight and beautiful olives. <sighs> I love Anne Sexton. I'm happy to finally just like give myself the opportunity to read her because I hoard authors and then I get scared. <laughs> so 
excited and sad because this poetry book made me really sad so i was upset and panicking with agua viva and then i was fucking sad as fuck reading the death notebooks and i got all these other sections to read so that is all so far should we pick out something else to read let me look at my goodreads i'm also just so i can show you so I'm using the monthlies, which you already saw. So I'll put like the book cover, book quotes, books that I loved, books that I DNF'd. And right now I'm just using the grids as lists of like collections. So all the maids that I own and read and the ones I don't own yet. All the life specters I own and read and have not owned yet. I haven't really been using these for keeping quotes. I wrote a total of two quotes and that is all. There's my Mary Oliver list. So if you have any ideas as to how to use the graded part of this notebook, let me know, because it's just all blank. I was keeping quotes in my little field notes, but then I find it like distracting to have to, and like tedious, to like underline the quote, tab it, then rewrite the quote, and then write it again in my flashcards, because this is where they end up anyways. So what I do is this, I don't write anything in a notebook, I write everything in my book. I'll put it on a sticky note, stick it in the book. Everything goes in the book. And then if I want to externalize it, then it goes in like the monthly section and it goes in the index cards. So just transferring the quotes here directly into here. And then eventually they form their own categories. I, I like showing you my categories because they have changed. There's always new ones. So I'll take you through them. Our categories are I, looking at animals, very specific. So making eye contact with like a wild animal. Cave, dance, freedom, hallelujah, hell, home, sad, silence, stars, stones, slash rocks, telephone wires, and time. So those are our categories so far. And I have some quotes here. I'll, oh, I'll read you one. I'm longing to see you. Someday I'll write and tell you all the things you mean to me in my mind. Shall I? That's from Vida in Virginia, page 43. Okay, so I do think we should pick out a TBR. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get, I'm gonna go on Goodreads. Where's my phone? Oh, I'm filming on my phone, smart. I'm gonna go on Goodreads and I'm gonna see how far I am from my 100 book goal. I said in my last video that I was gonna move it down to 80, but I'm not a quitter. Me, 2023? 101 books baby it's got to be delusional so i've read a total of 23 books i'm five books behind schedule and how many weeks do we have left in april two weeks so we need to find five books that i can possibly read in two weeks i was reading nine gates but that has been temporarily dnf'd by temporarily dnf it doesn't mean that i'm going to donate it because i loved it it just wasn't the right time sometimes books just come into your life and you start reading them and you're like I know I'm gonna love you but right now it's not the time so five books five books five books hmm. oh I'm well I'm currently reading at 82 so that will be our first one I think I think maybe I can finish that so at 82 I started April 9th I own almost all of May Sarton's journals, even at 15, which most people don't own, and I got from like some old lady on eBay, and it was really hard to find. Um, but she started journaling at 15, up until the age of 82. And so this one for sure, I don't know, can I finish this in two weeks? <laughs> I had set out doing five pages every day, and that I would be done by June 18th. But that is so far away. So I'm gonna keep reading this. By my tabs, I am on page 65. Do you think I can read all these pages in two weeks? I don't know, but we're gonna keep keeping on <laughs> and reading 82. This is May's last journal, and it's fascinating to me because I live with my grandma, who's eight, she's, I think my grandma's 84. We don't know, she changes her birthday so many times. <laughs> and like, I help her dress herself. I see her in pain. I help her walk. And so May's mind is there. Like May is May in every journal, right? She's always like so annoyed at everything, which I think is hilarious. But 
in this case it's like she wants to do things and like her body's not letting her it's like it's like age comes to you but your mind is still like young right so you're still who you've always were like your soul is who it is but then your body is like not cooperating with what you're telling it to do and that is so harrowing and upsetting to read about and it's allowing me to view old age in a different way almost also kind of accept it and it's a lot it's shifting my perspective and allowing more love and kindness for my grandmother as well because I can kind of correlate with like her daily routines and experiences and see that in my grandmother as well so important an important journal I think so that's one that's one that we're going to continue reading and if we don't finish it by the end of the month that's okay because then all of a sudden like a week into May I'll be done with like five books so it's fine also my birthday is next month just saying so let's read May that's our first one yes so I had calculated already before that if I read five pages a day I can finish by June what else should we read for sure poetry I always carry poetry around with me it's like my comfort blanket it's like I just need it I just I need it. So we should do poetry. We should do a comic book. That will be three. Two more. Two more. Maybe a novel. Short novel. A gimmer. I can't think of anything else. Okay. Realistically, I think that maybe I can finish two more books before the end of the month, but I'm going to set out the TBR anyways. So at 82, Miss Stevens Hears the Mermaid Singing. I had to put a little bit of washi tape because this one is kind of falling apart. Um, it I started a couple of pages. It reads like nonfiction. There were moments when Hillary saw life as tending always towards chaos. When it seemed that all one could be asked was just to keep the ashtrays clean, the bed made, the waste baskets emptied, as if one never got to the real things because of the constant, exhausting battle to keep ordinary life from falling apart. So I want to be able to get to experience May in her, like, fiction as well. New Life, because it's an exciting new pre-order. This will be the poetry that I carry around with me, so whenever I have free time, I'll just read a poem. Nikola Tesla fell in love with a pigeon. Nikola Tesla died in a hotel room in New York City. I heard about Nikola Tesla in the manifesting community, surprisingly enough. Maybe the Moth Keeper? I started this one a little while back and although the art was gorgeous, I wasn't into the plot so much. So I kind of like DNF'd it. But like maybe the Moth Keeper? Question mark? And the Annie Dillard, which I still haven't finished three months later. I'm being so slow with this tiny, tiny book and enjoying every minute of it, but still, <laughs> I don't know why. It's just like one essay at a time. I think it's the same thing with short stories. I just, it's just hard. It's just hard to read an essay collection for some reason. I don't know, but I, I love Annie Dillard. I really, really dig the way that she writes. And now I can show you the way that I kind of set out my TV art. I have these little Kokio tabs. And I'll just write the date. So like by April 9th, I should have read up until this part in the book. And then I'll just separate the book like that. So let me show you. Kind of like this. Sometimes it works out. Sometimes it doesn't. But I like to know that when I do pick up the book, I have to at least read it to one of the tabs. I can't stop until I reach a tab. So I always have a reading goal. Uh, in mind. All right, so these are all of the books, <laughs> Gravity, that I read in March and April, and all the books that I plan to read before the end of the month. Fingers crossed. Thank you for being here. I love you very much. Bye!